Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Right Perspective. Today, we're going to recap and review two action movies, Top Gun from 1986 and Top Gun Maverick, just released a few weeks ago. Both movies star Tom Cruise. The 1986 film also starred Kelly McGillis, Val Kilmer, Anthony Edwards, and Tom Skerritt. It made $357 million on a $15 million budget. And the original song from the film, Take My Breath Away, performed by the band Berlin, won a Golden Globe and an Academy Award. Top Gun Maverick, the movie that just came out a few weeks ago, also stars Miles Teller, Jennifer Connelly, John Hamm, Glenn Powell, Lewis Pullman, Ed Harris, and Val Kilmer. It had a budget of $170 million and... As of today, so let me just see, it came out May 27th and it's June 11th right now. How many weeks is that? About two. And already as of yesterday, Top, Top Gun Maverick nears $650 million worldwide. Wow. And mind you, this movie came out in theaters only which is an important point for During this, for this time in, in the world. That's yes. right. During okay. Pandemic. People are going out. And so you, when you think about the ripple effect of the, what this movie has made $650 million, it's also bringing people back into theaters. You go, to, you go to dinner before you go to a movie. And you know, for some people, <laughs> These details would be enough for these movies to be considered classics. But today we will determine whether it is a classic from the right perspective. We'll do a recap, discuss the movie, and then we'll take a voting symbol picked especially for this discussion. But we got to start with intros. Kick us off, bro. Hi, I'm Aubrey Wright. I'm the oldest. I'm Janiya Wright. I'm the middle. Hello, I'm Brittany Wright, and I'm the youngest. And my glasses are the cutest. See, I wasn't going to bring it up, the fact that you're the only one who doesn't have on aviators. <laughs> and I was letting it go. It was I was letting simple it, I was letting it go. <laughs> but you just couldn't even just let it go. I couldn't you, find any. And and the only Wasn't reason, it your idea? <laughs> it was Janaya's idea. Okay, it was, you was <laughs> it was my idea, but you also had more than a week. To, to find aviator glasses. It's a pandemic. I can't go outside. They're available in every convenience store and every oh, dollar store. Yes, convenient oh, to get so a many, virus. So many dollar stores. So, <laughs> so many, they're, 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 they're not to mention like, they're right at the corner store right here beside I me. Actually, I actually think <laughs> that that store that's in the parking lot where you live probably. Yeah, that's is. what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, so we're but, there. But They're you know what, that's, that's what this movie, this movie is about um, the people who are willing to do what it takes. Mm. Okay. I love the connections. That's, I love the, that's the top, to be a top gun, to be mm -hmm. admitted to the top gun program. Yeah. You are the yeah. top of the top of the top. And those are the people that are willing to do what it takes. But they're also okay. the willing, the people who are willing to step out and be different. No, but that's not how you get in. You have to meet the criteria. Mm -hmm. So once you've you met, met it, you excel. <laughs> Um, so, you demolish just, anyway the criteria anyway and i was just i was just sitting here calmly in the middle as a, as a good big brother just... <laughs> y'all you know there's one debate we haven't had even though we were all in a line even though and no one can tell by looking if anybody's watching this video they they won't know that we were in alignment on the aviator glasses um, so, so it's, it's as if it's as if that conversation the glasses are big they cover my eyes <laughs> The um, one conversation we definitely didn't have is about, oh you know, I, I would, I have a strong recommendation. No, before you say recommendation, I also want to be very clear. My sister has a surplus of sunglasses, so she didn't have to go out and do anything special for these glasses. She owns at least 50 pairs of sunglasses. So, yep, I was already a top gun. You're right. So, <laughs> let's... <laughs> you're right. There was no distance for me to travel to, to meet this. This criteria for excellence. Oh, All right. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Um, so <laughs> we did not debate, but I, you know, I, I, and actually, hopefully, there's no debate 
I want us to just be in agreement that we're going to have to vote on these movies separately. I don't think <laughs> sometimes we do the franchise together, but y'all, I think I would like to recommend the Top Gun and Top Gun Maverick get separate votes. The experiences, while it is one franchise, the experiences were different. All right, I'm for it. Okay. Yes, alignment. Just like <laughs> my aviator glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all, even though we're going to vote on them separately, and for those that are new to our podcast, what we actually do is we pick a voting symbol. And- <laughs> one, one thing though. I'm normally a go with the flow, but have we ever done that? Like broken this up will a be franchise? First. Yeah, this and will be I, first. And I just, I feel like I'm still going to go with the majority, but I feel like that's letting it off the hook. I feel like that's letting us off the hook. Because if, I'm, I'm just saying, if we've never done that before. I don't like know. Whole, I don't, maybe we haven't. We, we whole, haven't. We haven't. The whole point is. Oh. You got to decide on the franchise. Like when we do this, that's oh. what we're doing. Okay. We're okay. Deci- All right. Make me a flip flopper. I'm back. I don't agree. Okay. You're too easily sold. That's again why you're not in Top Gun school. <laughs> but, um, but bro, you're right. We should not betray our values. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's because when we do these, Okay. Uh, See, I thought we did break them up sometime, but I truly don't we remember. Haven't. Well, that's we've what I was asking. Okay. That's what I was We've never done it. We've always done right. it. We've All always right. kept it Well, together. this has now become extremely tricky and we haven't even made it into the discussion yet. So, oh, this is about right, to be we pick, saucy. We pick, we pick a voting saucy. symbol. We pick a voting symbol. We tailor that voting symbol to the content. And then we just, dis- at the end of discussion, we vote on the content. And, um, and it, it must be unanimous. Everyone, all three of us must agree that the movie is a classic or the franchise is a classic. Otherwise, it cannot be considered a classic from the right perspective. Okay. And I have a voting symbol. I have one that I would like to put forward that I believe forward. can you- serve even this com- the combined vote. <laughs> I just am so afraid. And it is the photograph of Maverick and Goose. Why? Great question. I'm so glad, yes. Why? Yes. I'm Janiyah's happy answers, Janiyah's symbols have been getting very non janaya <laughs> and this brought us back. This brought us back. This is an this is, <laughs> We're done here. And you we're know what though, here. bro? I, I don't think this one is a far reach. I'm gonna bring me It something. really is. Give it to me. It sir. isn't, and I'm Give gonna to tell me. you why. I need, I need a hard because drink. Because at the end of the drink. day, no drinking on the podcast. Bring, At the the end... to the that are not there. <laughs> bring me, bring me something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? You actually, you do need a drink because what we're talking about now is something very sad. Okay. okay. Where are my Because feels? the relate <laughs> <laughs> the relationship between Maverick and Goose at the end of the day, it's ultimately what motivates Maverick. And at the same time, It is the thing that keeps him from finding inner peace, right? When he's struggling, he conjures the memory of Goose to help him to focus. But at the same time, it's that loss of Goose, which keeps him from being able to move forward. And that that push and pull, that inner conflict is at the root of both of the movies. In the second Mm. movie, it's it's extended now to, to Goose's son. It's just, it's another layer of tragic, um, you know, processing for, 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 for Maverick, where he's, he's, he's proud of Goose's son and wants to support him and wants to lean in. But at the same time, he is still so guilt-ridden and, um, and, and, and grappling with um, his, 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 the loss of Goose and his, his participation in that, that moment. And so that, 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 that picture, um, for a person like Maverick, who he, he's not a sentimental person. He doesn't have a ton of pictures, okay? He doesn't have a ton of people he cherishes. But that photo, he keeps it. And we know he's, he's always kept it. We get to now see 40, 35 years later, he's still up on the, on the cork board. And that photo memorializing his relationship with Goose is a, is a great symbol for that inner conflict. And so that is what I propose. 
Mm. That was a very well thought out piece. It's so zen. <laughs> Man, I had like eight bullets. I it's was ready. So zen. Yes. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh. What do you got? Did you come up with any bro? Yeah, I just I like the glasses. Mm. Yeah, the a- aviator glasses. It is a big part of specifically aviator. Specifically aviator. <laughs> Or oh, see, no, don't, don't try to rope me in. The eyes. He wrote me in unknowingly, that, Brittany. It, it they cover time. the eyes. Just doesn't meet the specs. Just doesn't. Specs are meant to be broken. Oh my god! Aviators do a wraparound. It gets some of the peripheral. <laughs> Cause that's the thing. It's yeah. a high pressure. Oh, I'm looking. I'm looking at my it's peripheral. A high pressure oh, it's, it's lives shaded. are at stake. It's shaded. You oh, can't look have at that glare. peripheral. Oh, you there's can't no have glare. Oh, look at that peripheral. Okay, listen, I don't listen. see anything. We're, we're talking about my symbol. Okay, I like <laughs> the glasses. The, I like the aviator glasses. They are part of obviously the whole, you know, um, <laughs> culture behind yes. what they do. Yes. But also, I thought it would be cool. Because when we're voting, we can put them on or not. That's a good sales pitch. Like that. <laughs> That's a very good pitch. I like where you're going with that. Because it has both a video and an audio component right. serving both of our audiences. Exactly. I like where you're going That's with very that. Good. It's a good tactic. <laughs> now that's how you make a bullet. That's yeah. how you make a bullet. Yeah. See? Yeah. Every time, you know? Every time. It's good. Oh, that's, 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 the, love- that's the big bro effect. He's coming love- for you. I love my sister so very you. much. <laughs> Sis, did you come up with any voting symbols literally right now? Yes. Um, a Navy ship, a plane. <laughs> um, Your lack of not the, the sunglasses. Um, the little Top Gun thing that he, you know, put ooh, down. Oh, actually, that is a good one. A little thing. That is a good one. That's a good one. The, um, the wings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's yeah, a good one. That's really that's good. A good one. Yeah, and that's uh, a good one. yeah, that's a good one actually. So there, there it is. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't have to. My awesomeness it just oozes out all the time. So I just, <laughs> I'm able to come up with things oh, on the spot. Me. On the somebody, spot. Somebody <laughs> help me. Somebody. I hate that one of them was good. <laughs> <laughs> very, very resentful. But you know, I think I don't know why you're shocked. You know, it's just it's what I do. It's not how I wanted it to go. But um <laughs> Well, I know you we need to send me three I know options. you need to I know you need to send me this screenshot so that <laughs> I can um I'm gonna get my friend to put some aviators on Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pose. Yeah, that. Uh, you, you, All right, so so what are we going? Not meeting the criteria. We have three options. We have the photo of Maverick and Goose. We have the glasses, which again have this wonderful visual component, and we have the wings, which showed up in multiple ways. You know? Yeah, and you forgot one more finger: the Navy ship. Nope, no, the, it's actually was, not under it. consideration. Yeah, that um, a- that finger is missing. You see it? I don't. It's down. Push, pull it up. Pull it, it up. It won't go. Okay. There was clearly no care that in that in that in that suggestion. No one's it. <laughs> There's not a fourth because you know All normally right. you just let's, <laughs> okay. Let's do a process. <laughs> let's do a process of elimination. I love the wings. You know I do what love the the wings. the wings though are really the job. You know and um and. You know, the, the photo is the relationship. And, um, you know, the glasses though, really do speak to, um, there's something in it that is about really the kind, there's a kind of person that becomes a Top Gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's something about <laughs> the, the competitiveness and that drive that is somehow like the glasses, they do kind of take you there. Not Britney's, but the ones that Aubrey and I are wearing. Um, oh my God. <laughs> what is going on? I just. All right. Who's going to make the decision? This is this so is so hard when you have haters. So hard. All right. <laughs> Y'all, 
Um, bro, I think, and I think again, so if I was gonna do a process of elimination recommendation for y'all, bro, the other thing is we don't have three pairs of aviator glasses right now. We only have Look, two. Listen, I'm not gonna just keep sitting here during this uh, silent war between- You the, pick, you pick, Aubrey. Of those gonna, three options, you pick. Listen, Normally, you, you pick, there's you pick, no, Aubrey. There's no silent war because I don't feel a way. Because bro, you pick. <laughs> Pick which sister you like the best. (laughs) Bro, you pick. (laughs) He has turned off his video. Bro, we know you're still there. Pick which sister goes first on your wheel. The great thing about this is- Pick a symbol, which is actually you deciding which of us you love the most. Here's the great thing. If there I was a just life pick, or a death, I could just. Away. <laughs> that would be the thing you choice. forgot that obviously I could just pick mine, which is oh, the glasses. You put yourself above myself. both of us. However, you want to oh, say it, I didn't have to pick between oh, y'all. You know what? So, <laughs> it's the Titanic all over again. So we were doing. There we're was doing space the on there's space on that door. And Done. We're about, and we're about, <laughs> and we're about to take our glasses off. Excellent. Even though I will let you know that my aviator glasses probably will make random appearances throughout the, <laughs> as they should so just just know that as they should oh that's a ooh. and <laughs> that's as will my aviator glasses will as well you know i'm not frustrated that they're not aviators i am frustrated that you called them aviators just that, that was the first time I- <laughs> for me for me it's two layers all right, well, let's keep going. Um, people still <laughs> boxing. People want to box. If in. you are new to our podcast, we do a full recap of the movie because or the content that's being considered because many times our content is dusty. You haven't seen it in a while, or, or you you've never seen it, but you still want to enjoy the podcast. So we do a recap at the top. It is full of spoilers. That is your spoiler alert. All right, let's do the recap of top gun okay this movie takes place in 1986 and it centers on a navy fighter pilot named peter mitchell played by tom cruise who is known by the call sign maverick if you look up the definition of maverick in the dictionary it's an unorthodox or independent-minded person and that is the perfect nickname for this guy he is an excellent pilot arguably the best but he is arrogant and he has no regard whatsoever for the roles. The movie takes place in 1980. Oh, <laughs> I already read that paragraph. What the- <laughs> keep it going. Listen, keep, keep it, it going. going. Keep it going. The mask is going. Going. What is behind? What is behind all of this? Bra- all of this bravado. Well, that's a great question. His father was a top fighter pilot and died under mysterious circumstances when Maverick was young. And somehow that is fueling him to be both excellent and reckless. He doesn't follow orders and he pushes his planes to the limits. Mm. The plane he flies Mm. at F-14A Tomcat, it requires two operators, a pilot and a Rio. A Rio is a radio intercept officer. Maverick's Rio is Nicholas Bradshaw, who goes by the call sign Goose. These two don't just work together, they are best friends. Goose has a wife and a young son and wishes that Maverick would take fewer risks. Of course, the Navy authority figures also wish Maverick would take fewer risks, but they can't deny his talent. Eventually, Maverick and Rio get sent to Top Gun Training, a training program for only the best of the best of fighter pilots. They teach aerial combat there. They call it like dog fighting. (laughs) Maverick and Rio, (laughs) Maverick and his Rio Goose have almost finished the training program when they find themselves under attack by enemy planes. Maverick does his best, but Goose ends up dying that day when his eject mechanism doesn't work properly. Maverick is officially cleared of all fault in Goose's death, but he is heartbroken and considers giving up on being a pilot. He almost doesn't go to graduation. After a few pep talks from a love interest and the commanding officer at Top Gun, he does decide to go to graduation. He finishes second in the class. His first, the first place went to a talented and more disciplined fighter pilot, Tom Iceman Kaczynski, played by Val Kilmer. They don't get along at first, but eventually they do come to respect each other. 
And the pilots haven't even finished their graduation punch when they are sent on assignment. They have to rescue a communication ship that has become disabled in enemy territory. Maverick is timid at first because he's still shaken up by Goose's death, but eventually he gets it together, takes down three enemy planes, causing the remaining two planes to retreat. After that successful mission, Maverick has the opportunity to pick any Navy assignment that he wants, and he decides to be an instructor for the Top Gun program. And that is how it, things end at the end of Top Gun, uh, from the, the original movie. And the movie that has just come out, Top Gun Maverick, this sequel to that 1986 movie, Top Gun, is set more than 30 years later, they lean into that time difference, that, that time gap. At the end of the original, Pete uh, Mitchell, AKA Maverick, our main character, he had decided to become an instructor at Top Gun. And now um, it turns out, we find out that he actually only lasted for about two months as an instructor at Top Gun. That is actually not surprising considering his proclivity to break the rules. And since then, over that 30 odd years, he has apparently bounced around a lot of different parts of the Navy. And um, it turns out that as he's been doing that, he's been pissing off Navy leadership and never getting promoted past captain because that would ground him and he wants to stay in the air. We do learn that Tom Iceman Kazansky, again, Val Kilmer, a rival turned friend from the first movie has risen up the ranks in the Navy over the years and has a, apparently played a huge role in ensuring Maverick has never been benched or dishonorably discharged. At some point, Maverick landed in a Navy role that is probably perfect for him, a test pilot for new combat planes. It is literally his job to push the planes to, the, to their limits, something he was going to do all the time anyway. So this, this is the job he has when the movie opens. And of course, he still has no regard for the rules. When he finds out that his current testing program is about to be shut down so the money can be put toward drone programs, he does the opposite of closing up shop as he's been instructed. Instead, he takes the plane, a hypersonic scramjet called Dark Star, out for another test run anyway. And he pushes the plane past Mach 10. Now, do you even, do they even define when you're watching the movie what Mach 10 is? No, they don't. You know what though? But you know, it's extremely fast, okay? All right, and, and, the, and the plane wasn't ready, okay? And while he knows that would get him fired, um, he knew that in doing that and in, in showing that, that, that plane uh, hitting that point, it would ensure the continuation of the program. And um, that would save jobs. And you know, yeah, while he did basically disintegrate the plane, because again, it wasn't ready to go past Mach 10, <laughs> The Navy can't shut down the program now because that speed had never been accomplished before. So Maverick goes to face the music, just knowing that he is about to get canned when the ice man comes through yet again. Okay, Maverick has now been reassigned. And where is he going? Wait for it. Back to the Top Gun training program. Going back to Top Gun is of course tricky for a lot of reasons, but mostly because Maverick is still more than 30 years later processing the loss of his best friend, Nick Goose Bradshaw. But also Maverick has an on again, off again love interest near the base. It's not the same one from the first movie. Maverick, even though this character actually had been referenced in the first movie, she was at the, the, the love interest in the first movie. Maverick had been ordered to train an elite group of Top Gun alumni for a very special mission, an urgent mission. They must bomb an unsanctioned uranium enrichment program being built by another country. The commanding officer at Top Gun is not happy to work with Maverick because of his reputation for being reckless and breaking rules. He doesn't even like the mission that Maverick has designed to bomb the uranium plant because it requires very risky flying maneuvers. And what you also come to realize is that the commanding officer considers the mission itself a suicide mission. And so he cares more about the uranium plant being bombed successfully than he does about having a flight plan that could potentially even get the pilots on the mission home safely. 
Maverick knows his plan and training tactics are risky, but they at least create a chance for the pilots to make it back alive. So, you know, obviously the two of them are at odds throughout the movie. And to make matters more challenging, the pilots are not really excited to be under Maverick's leadership either. They know his skill, but they also know his reputation. And these pilots, they are the best of the best. And they don't want to be led by someone with so many stains on his record. One member of the cohort in particular really doesn't want to be led by Maverick, and that is Lieutenant Bradley Rooster Bradshaw, the son of Maverick's late best friend, Goose. Apparently, Maverick had pulled Rooster's first application to the Naval Academy, causing Rooster to be four years behind where he could be in his Naval career. Maverick pulled the application because Rooster's mother, who was dying at the time, asked him to, but Rooster doesn't know that. He just thinks that he was just betrayed by Maverick, someone who had been a father figure to him. So throughout the course of the movie, we do realize that, Ro that Rooster is, a highly, is, is highly skilled as, as a naval pilot, but he does tend to overthink. He actually gets teased by the other pilots for this, especially a, a pilot that flies under the name Hangman. Maverick says that good combat piling requires you to trust your instincts, not logic, and Rooster just isn't there. And even with all of that push and pull over the course of the rigorous training, Maverick does eventually win the respect of the pilot cohort, and he is making progress and helping them to become a team and to become better pilots when two things happen. Number one, the timeline for the mission gets moved up. And number two, Iceman dies. And so Maverick has no one advocating for him and is immediately fired by the commanding officer of Top Gun. Just as that commanding officer is about to order the pilot cohort to use a watered down version of Maverick's plan that he had been training them on, Maverick does what? He steals a plane yet again and uses a, stat, a simulation to demonstrate that very tricky mission that he had, that he had designed was indeed possible. Of course, Everybody's mind is shocked to Channel 9. The pilot cohort had been <laughs> running those simulations for weeks and none of them had accomplished it. The commanding officer, of course, has no choice but to reinstate Maverick and make him not just the instructor, but the lead of the mission. Maverick is going out. Maverick picks the best pilots from the cohort and they set off on the mission. And yes, he includes Rooster, even though Rooster has not yet demonstrated his ability to fly on instinct instead of logic. The team sets out for the mission, knowing that the odds say that they will never come back. And for the first time, Maverick has heightened stakes because Rooster, Goose's son, is on the mission with him, okay? And also, Maverick has rekindled things with his love interest, and he wants to make it home to be with the love interest and her daughter to be a family. These are stakes that Maverick has never had, never had yes. okay? And at first, the mission, which involves a total of four planes, is going pretty well. The only problem is that Rooster is moving way slower than the flight plan calls for. Again, being too cautious. Eventually, though, he finds his courage and he speeds up. And it is just in time because things start to go left. The team successfully bombs the uranium, but the enemy is now after them. Using the tactics that Ma Maverick taught them, Three of the four planes managed to take down many enemy planes and get away. The only one that doesn't is Mavericks because what? He sacrificed his jet to save Rooster, okay? Maverick is now on the ground, okay? In enemy territory, okay? Plane gone, all right? And he is about to get killed by a war helicopter when the helicopter gets blown up. Who did that? Rooster. Rooster has not only defied orders, he has followed his instincts for the very first time and returned to save Maverick. And you get to be relieved for all of two seconds because then Rooster gets shot down, okay? He survives the fall and reunites with Maverick on the ground. The two of them end up stealing an old plane from the enemy and end up having to dogfight with, with the planes, with newer technology that the, that the enemy has. And they're doing a great job when they do what? They run out of ammunition and they need to eject from their planes. <laughs> the plane is so old, however, that the eject doesn't work and they are trapped, okay? Just then, Hangman, the pilot that always mocked Rooster, comes to save Rooster and Maverick by blowing up the last enemy plane. This means that everyone on the mission made it back alive. 
Now Maverick and Rooster can mend fences, which is what Goose would have wanted. The end. Man, I felt like I was watching. I just, I just that really was felt, so I felt like I just sake. watched the movie again. <laughs> I can I can I say that was can I just say one thing that I felt like was so super awesome though that you didn't mention what? was that they landed the plane with no landing gear. How could I forget? That was like I was like, yo, how are they gonna because the when landing they, were escaping, they had no landing gear? Because yeah, when they were escaping, the landing Bro, gear. Thank you for adding that. And I'm just like. It was wow, you know, that was a great uh, yeah. summation. Yeah. You gave you just gave the kind of summation that when you're watching somebody give it, they're saying all the stuff in your head. <laughs> like that's the, yeah, except that for the landing thing. gear part, which My was very I, I was, was trying to let it well, go. I thought, it. But I thought was, you didn't. I, I thought was, about that was it. awesome. I I'm thought not. about it, but I was like, oh, we'll just bring it up when we're talking about gotcha, it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I was like, we'll, we'll bring it up when we're talking about it. Because it there were a couple things odds. I was like, we're so mm-hmm. against them for so many so reasons. Many re- and, but everything made sense, though. Lo- yep. Yep. But, but we're not, we're, let's not skip to that one. Yes. Let's, feel, let us so, start Top Gun. Top Gun. Top the Gun. original. The one that started it all and apparently catapulted Tom Cruise's career. Right. Definitely at least one of them. Yeah. 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 Bro, we know that you are an action movie. Like you love action movies. Let's start with you, bro. You know, how, how well, did, how did this story, how did this story stand up, you know, in terms of, and the glasses are, his glasses are back on. How did, <laughs> how did this story work out for you, bro? <laughs> Um, I feel like first of all, <laughs> it wouldn't be realistic for me to act like. I mean, I, I was a little boy when Top Gun was out. You know what I mean? Like Top Gun was just, and it was a movie that was an action movie that if you had a younger kid, it was still okay to let them watch. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it was like. It's an action movie, but it wasn't. It wasn't super chain. boring. You know what I mean? like, it yeah, also like, wasn't like all and, you know, the field and yeah. The video game started coming out, like you know, the talk of video game, and then the there was this game called Afterburner. And Afterburner, it wasn't a Top Gun game, but it was all fueled by Top Gun. And Afterburner was like in it because ar- arcades was this stuff back then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like before it was really into the, uh, you know, consoles that people have at home. Like, and after Burner had a thing you could sit in and like control, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whoa! The, 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 the plane. <laughs> and so what I'm saying is, is that I really, I, I promise y'all, I tried to watch this movie objectively. But there's just too much the formative year just the nostalgia you know I and mean? yeah, the- just attached to it because like the the one thing that got on my nerves about this movie um presented itself in a couple different movies but even the thing that got on my nerves about it i still like because it got on my nerves and it was the volleyball scene there's a part in rocky three after apollo creek is you know done training rocky that they're doing the race that they race on the beach and then they get excited and they start jumping around in the water. <laughs> and it's just so weird that it, it always kind of threw me that it's like in the middle of this super bravado, just, you know, 1980s movies, they just got these weird scenes of just, you know, shirtless dudes playing volleyball. <laughs> wow. Anyway, but anyway. But it was on par try- with the rest of the movie. But the, the but the point I'm trying to make is, is that, <laughs> and we're going to we're going to get to that whatever you're talking about. <laughs> but the point I'm just trying to say is is that I because the way that we feel about the effects in Top Gun Maverick is how people felt about Top Gun. You know what I'm saying? So it's like when you're watching Top Gun in 2022, the effects are good, but you don't realize that, man. Like, 
in 80, you know, in the 80s, that was amazing what they did, you know? And so I still have the residual feelings of all of that, sure. you know what I mean? So, so I'm just going to say that, you know, like, I know, I just feel like I just, you know, fell back into that, loving the movie every time I, every, every, every time I saw it, because it's just got so many classic moments that you look forward to, and even the stuff that that gets on your nerves, you're like, oh, you're going to volleyball, see, and you're still enjoying it on some level, because it's part of the experience of, of, of Top Guns. So what I would say really would be interesting about this conversation is, is just, um, through our text chain and stuff like that, you all had some experiences with that. So I think that's probably where we should start of, of, of just talking about, you know, like what you, you all's views were. Being seeing it for the first time, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in 2022 and, and everything like that. And I'll take my glasses back off because I'm <laughs> told to take them off. I really want to wear them the whole time, but I, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be reasonable. Yes, a website that I read said it is important for us to make eye contact for for a successful vlog. <laughs> Great work, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Brittany, Brittany let's do smiles like we're realtors. <laughs> Sis, kick <laughs> <us off. laughs> Sis, kick us off. You know, uh, you already started to react. Just is already. <laughs> Uh, did this? Did they not have no AC on the set? Everywhere they went, they were sweaty, and it was getting on my nerves. I was like, "You're sweaty on the ship. You're sweaty in the plane. You're sweaty on the beach. You're sweaty in the bar." I was like, "There's no AC." No, 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 no you don't have There's AC nothing in the aircraft character. You <laughs> can say to me, even when they're sitting down in certain places where it's just like you're not doing it's anything. Hot. Why are you so hot? <laughs> it's hot where they the are. level of sweat that was happening in this movie was absurd <laughs> and it irritated me the whole movie. The whole movie. If I would have listed a hundred things that got on Britney's nerves about talking. <laughs> Never would have made it to the, the sweat level. Who knew? <laughs> so I'm just I'm like, okay, all right. So the so first of all, other yeah. things, okay, that got on my nerves when there were fighting these other evil planes. Which plane was evil? Okay, because right now it just looks like you all are all evil because all your planes look the same and you're all zooming around in the air. Really? I was like, this really. So you 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 didn't see a difference? No, That's zero amounts. And okay. I thought it was always funny how the bad guys always got the sunglass shield on their helmet. Yeah, like you just can't see them in every movie because that's part of them being. The, it's like yeah, you know, if you're like we got clear, I guess. So we're you know we're the good guys. The bad guys always got in the shadows. Yeah, the under the, the tent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I should not have started off with the list of things that frustrated me. But no, I did. My favorite part, though, of the movies was just really watching Tom Cruise and Goose. So Maverick and Goose's relationship. Um, I did appreciate that. Yeah. I really appreciated their just their friendship. Um, but listen, that even frustrated me. I was like, how is Goose so dead and bloody? And Tom Cruise looks like he just laid in the water. I was like, what? They're what, what, not what on goose, the same goose, plane. Goose hit, goose hit his head on the on the canopy mm -hmm. because it, it, that, the exact function didn't hit him straight out. Yeah, so that's what killed him. Yeah. It wasn't the it wasn't the the fall mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. it was that he was he, he was injured. He was he, he was already dead by the time he you know. What mm. Well, listen, that moves this movie up. A half a point. A half a point. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Like, bro, you were talking about the experience, mm -hmm. and Britt was was talking about like these some of these story points that mm -hmm. didn't work, and what I um you know really struggled with throughout the whole movie was just like um the pacing mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. It was like there were moments where it was like something exciting was happening, but the the those moments were so 
they, they weren't happening often enough. And so I would get so bored in the, the, the music and this, the, you know, there was a couple of story points that they had included that to me just did not pan out and did not make Which sense. Ones? In particular, the storyline about uh, Maverick's father, you know, in the beginning, mm-hmm. we are led to believe that that is going to be the thing that gives him a revelation that will allow him to do his hero's journey arc right? He was going to have to overcome the demons of like his father's mysterious death. But that ends up being something that's almost like thrown away in the film. They mention it and then they give it like a really half-assed explanation. Yeah. And, and, and really it's not even the thing that, 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 that Maverick is grappling with in the movie. It's mm-hmm. really goose. And so they could have deleted that whole father thing and I, it would have been better to me. Yeah, the other you're not piece wrong. that you're not wrong. <laughs> the other piece that really just felt really jammed in and it was so unnecessary was the love story. Yes. And it just it you didn't it need it. So unnecessary. It didn't it didn't motivate Tom, it didn't demotivate it, it just didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. And so it was if anything it was just like a it was like an attempt to round him out in some way that didn't it didn't accomplish the goal. And he and that actress did not have chemistry. They just not didn't, at all. you mm-hmm. know? And so it was just like, ugh, I just, even I just stand their, the whole, even just as them, not even them not having chemistry, but also just even their storyline. Like, yeah. It's stupid. like, it's like this teacher who's like now mm-hmm. like sleeping with her students and she like gives up a top job to come back and be with him. And they did, hadn't even had a depth of relationship. It was just, it just, it just, to me, it's you know it taken out. I've fallen for you. And I actually, and I, and you know what? I know we normally kind of do the, we do the tidbits, you know, maybe later, like the little um, factoids, little trivias. But y'all, I got to say, I was so turned off by their love scene that I actually, I literally Googled worst movie love scenes to see what would come up. And it came up. And it was named, and, and what I learned was that everyone, like it, it's generally accepted that that was an awkward relationship. And it turns out um, an awkward on screen relationship. And it turns out that um, the movie was, was done. A focus group saw the movie and wanted a, a love scene in a romantic relationship. Oh, and that so makes it was so much freaking it was sense. Added, yeah, it was sense. added oh. at the end. And, and, and they even had, there was some circumstance under which they had to, um, they flew, um, you know, Tom Cruise and uh, the, the woman who was playing his love interest, flew them back months and months after shooting to um, do the love scene and the scene in the elevator. Do you guys remember that scene in the elevator where she had on that hat? And they were like yeah. flirting in the elevator. Well, why did she have on the hat? So much time had passed. She was in another project. Her hair color was completely different right. by the time they filmed right. that. So wow. even if they had had an opportunity to build chemistry during the course of the original filming, they then come back and they're like, Ugh. anyway, I just thought, leave it on the cutting room floor. Get it, that father piece, the romantic piece. Ugh. I think that I had to, to make it through this movie. I had to put in my head, Brittany, this came out in 1986. Mm-hmm. Imagine yourself watching this, which let's be clear, I was only one. So there was no happy, I was not watching this movie. <laughs> uh, imagine this movie in 86 with these things. Cause another thing was the plane and its bullets. They look like Star Wars bullets. I said, what's happening here? And so I was, I was like, but you know what, Britt? The, to the, have- the, the, the the Star Wars bullets. Yes, whenever they were shooting and they were fighting and I was confused about who was good, who was bad, uh, the bullets that were coming out from the plane, they look like Star Wars bullets. The way that they were shooting. They look like Star Wars bullets to me, to me. Well, you know, they really, they really do. That's how they look though. Well, listen, they look like Star Wars bullets. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but just watching, I said to myself, yeah, I could see how this would be exciting um, in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and also I see how this 
would need a larger screen. Um, watching it on a television. That's a, another good point. That's another good point. That's a, from, good point a movie too. from That's the another 80s. good point. I was just like, this is not. And so for me, normally when that happens, I depend on the story to to draw me in, to pull me in. Great, great if I much, can't get that, and there much. isn't, there is none. There's not, and, and I, so I was just like, this is, and even there were certain parts that were super cute. Like when the whole song that did come up um, yeah, yeah, that yeah. everyone sang, like you lost those parts, love and feeling, yeah. you lost that love and feeling. Like I appreciated those parts. I was like, that's cute. You know, this camaraderie that they have. Um, but other than that, so because I couldn't experience the special effects the way that they were intended to be, um, I couldn't get excited about the movie and mm-hmm. certain things did fresh me. So I don't remember them being in battle. Um, Maverick and Goose when Goose passed. Cause I remember just having that feeling when I was watching, like this didn't have to happen. Yeah. Your ass should have been back on the Naval ship. Yeah. And I was just like, so even though it wasn't his fault, his mm-hmm. death, it was still your fault. It, yeah. Because you should have been done. You were done. Like I just, I that part frustrated me because I was like, oh, he's getting off easy for this. But you Not know, what? his it mental better, life. But, but, but if he, but it if better they, explains if, why they should have just left the tragedy of Goose as the only thing that character was grappling with. That whole father right. piece, it just to me was so anticlimactic <laughs> and unnecessary. So when the, anticlimactic. When the guy is just like, yeah, he died just doing yeah, bo- his bo- regular bo- job. It was like. Yeah, both of those, both of those. Slice it out. Things do feel, the, the love story and the, yeah, they do feel shoehorned in for no reason. You're right. Yeah, I, 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 I cannot. Well, and I can appreciate them. them trying. I can appreciate them trying to add levels to the movie. I can appreciate that because you want to have, when movies do that well, more than just action fans are going to see this movie. That's right. So in order for that to happen, others have to go see this movie. So That's I can right. appreciate them trying to add some depth. But baby, if in if anybody if anybody won an award for this for acting, it, it was a sham. It was it was a someone paid someone because it wasn't for this. I haven't <laughs> looked it up in a week, but I think it was really just the um the music that ended up winning a lot of awards. To okay, take my breath away. Um, is what won won awards. Okay, so so let me ask you all. So you got to watch that, and obviously we go directly into the second because you got to watch them pretty much back to back so what was your feeling experiencing in big screen uh and and watching this movie like like what were y'all's feelings i went in with my expectations low because the music was so slow and not helpful in the first one the second movie they start with a very, they start out just for, and it's just for the first few minutes. They start out with that slow music again. And obviously they're doing it to pay homage to the original. And I just thought, oh Lord, we've gone awry again. And, but then they, they quickly, they paid respects for two to three minutes. And then they, they, they then went on a soundtrack trajectory that to me, apples and oranges. It was a completely different approach. It was a better approach. It was respectful to the original approach, but it was absolutely a pleasant surprise. So, bro, I went in. Well, 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 to but, your and, question, but just, but just to be fair, very low expectations. Just, just to be fair, thirty years from now, somebody will probably say the same thing about the music in Maverick. I don't know, bro, because we've watched '80s movies and the, and we've celebrated the music. That's what I'm saying. It, it was just it, the movie. Okay. The movie in particular did not have a good soundtrack. The original, to me, you know. Okay, no, I can I, I can see I can see what, what what you're saying. I can see what you're saying, bro. Are you bleeding on the other side of your head? On that that side, but right up, yeah. Is that blood? I've seen it a couple of times and I'm trying not to say anything because I was trying to stop Janai from having to edit, but I was like, I think that that's blood. Better? Yeah, I'm happy yeah. you caught that. Uh, yeah, I didn't know study either. Are you okay? What is that from? 
<laughs> what did you do? It's a pimple smudge. Oh. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's not funny. that's so rude it's so rude <laughs> it's not funny aubrey oh blink, gosh blink twice is mar beating you <laughs> <laughs> blink twice we'll so stay in the hell <laughs> were you reenacting scenes from top gun yeah. <laughs> Just tell us. <laughs> um okay sorry yeah but sis you wish your answer to aubrey's question about like um you know your expectations going in uh the they second were, movie. Oh, they were they were dead mm. they were like seven feet in the ground you know they were they were under a coffin and i was just like i don't want to go see this this is going to be terrible and <laughs> i was like oh Oh, this was nice. It really yeah, just, what, what did y'all think? Did you like it? I mean, it- the way that I described it to Janaya was Top Gun Maverick made me appreciate Top Gun. Mm. It made me nostalgic. I was, so it, I was like, I've never had that happen where a second movie will make me will retro will make me retroactively not hate as much the for the initial movie, and that's that's really what it did. You know, it's 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 so interesting you said that because that's why I really didn't want to decouple. That was another reason why I just didn't want to decouple these because the thing is is that I can see somebody saying that. Like that, because it's like they did such a good job of like making a tight plot this time and pulling from elements from the first movie. Like that whole plot point with the general's daughter was just great. You know, this was just yeah. Like, in the first movie, they had a throwaway joke that they used a couple of times where yeah. they were just making fun of Maverick dating the general's daughter in a general's daughter in a uh, very casual way and right. she turns out to be that character that that general's daughter is the love interest in this in in maverick and she's all grown up and she's she's had a marriage and she has a daughter she's divorced she's owns a bar she's still very much so you can just like a, a military brat you know what i mean like she's still like she, her bar is not far from a base you know, and so she's still very much um, in that lifestyle. And so this is why she and Maverick have been in and out of touch over the years because he, his life has had him in and out of that particular base area right, right. over time. Mm. I'm so happy you all explained that. <laughs> I never got the connection and I was like, this, that, and, and this the is a new is- character. <laughs> that's Terrible. what makes it a good, that's what makes it a good connection is like, you would have to have had, paid attention to that in the first one so it was it was one of those things that was good even if you didn't know that 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 was a callback storyline um but it made it better if you did and they had chemistry in the sense they of did yes it, it and we've all had that well i mean i'm saying it's a common experience of that person for whatever reason you know y'all never just really line up like that but you've always had a connection and every time y'all are in the same place you know it's it's like and and so i'm just saying the relationship felt real it yeah. felt like a real circumstance of yes this dude that, but you know he's maverick you know he's out doing this thing and yeah um, tom cruise as an actor is just to think about this is 30 years and it's still felt like Maverick. It, it, it's still, and I'm going to tell you going into the movie, I was concerned about that. Like I was concerned about, because there's so many examples of, you know, they bush, b- buff off the edges and you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's just, or they make, like, it's like Maverick was a Maverick, but he gets results. You understand what I'm saying? And it's like they would, t- you know, so many sequels take those elements away but they did it in a way where not only was he still him, but they allowed him to kind of retire. And you saw him going through that with his, uh, you know, Ace Boon Coon, uh, 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 Ice, 
And Ice is just sitting there talking to him like, look, man, it's time. You know, he's like, like it's, it's time. And just seeing the subtlety and his realization, like, you know, it is time. And with, with that, this whole thing becomes his last hurrah without them even really having to say it. You mm-hmm. know, it, it, mm-hmm. it wasn't even set up like that. It was just all this subtlety mm-hmm. that fed from the first movie. The, the whole fact of you would think Ice would be the one who would end up as an admiral mm-hmm. just based on how they started. And Maverick is like, yo, I belong in the air. So he's going to just keep doing him and being the captain for the It all made sense. Yeah. And even the, um, the, the mission itself, right? The mission itself was a mission. Cause I'm like, I, I knew they were going to do a scene where they really showcase Maverick's flight skill. And I was like, I didn't know how they were going to do that. And I knew that it had to be some kind of battle, but it's like, there are dog fights going on in 2022. So how are you going to, and they just, that whole plot line of you got to go take out this thing. And there's so many stakes, but they don't have to do it. The most of it against people. So you don't even have to struggle with that in your face, you know, like when it's war movie, for example, mm-hmm. you always got to grapple with the other person is just a person. You know what I mean? Like you got to see that, which is part of it. It's good to grapple with the fact that the antagonist is a person too. But when it's like, it's basically them versus this facility. They didn't say, you know, I mean, I'm, of course we're going to assume some people were there, but they didn't say that one way or the other. So it just lets you really get into the story. And I'm going to just say that flight scene, what did y'all think about that flight scene where he showed it was possible? Because I just thought that scene was dope. What did y'all think about that scene? I just thought, there he is again, galvanizing all the people that are not supposed to be in cahoots with him to help him to steal a plane yet again to, um, it's for me, it was one of those things I, I loved the way it played out in terms of showing his skill set, but I also love that it was like that's that same old Maverick. He's got those relationships. He's been honing in the background, and Beautiful. we don't even we yes. need to see them to know that they were there. Um, and you know, and it also was about him um, being willing to sacrifice. There's a piece of Maverick that is there's something that's embedded in his recklessness, where it's almost like I'd rather it be me than others. And so um, it's almost like, I'm just going to, you know, let, let me just put the pedal to the metal, you know, and see how it goes. Um, so that was, it, 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 for me, bro, it was one of those things that was a great action sequence, but it was also about the, um, the depth of that character and how well it had been developed coming through. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I look at Maverick and I just see, listen, I can show you better than I can tell you. Like, that's what I, I feel, just, that's what I feel I like Maverick. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word. Don't worry about it. Um, so I, I did. I, I loved it. When it was like, there's not supposed to be anything happening right now. And you can, like, you heard the audience in the, yeah, in the no, movie you did, theater being you like, did. Dear, you, you did, you did. You know, you just kind of got hyped, like, here you go. So, you know, that's that so was. True. And, and, and it, it, to the point earlier, that's the thing that we, kind of forget about of the experience of being in the movies. Yes. Well, <laughs> let me, I will say this about, um, about Maverick. This is one of those um, movies where, and this is like really digging in now to this, 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 the acting, the way that the, the portrayals of these characters, you know, these actors, they were, um, first of all the casting was was great oh right. the cast every was last great. person okay every last person and the no way no that no the reports. movie was shot i mean they there there were close ups you know where where sometimes it was the intensity in the facial expression um was the thing that answered the question you know there was times like goose's um reaction to maverick there were parts that it required goose to have no words for us to understand what he was feeling about Maverick and I'm not goose rooster rather the, yeah. the child. And so I guess who that looks just that, like goose. That was excellent casting. That son <laughs> looked just like that father. They did um, so good. 
to, in talking about the subtlety and just how they are. First of all, the movie felt so real in the sense of this is how it would be. And the thing about when you're trying to lead a group of people, there is nothing that galvanizes them better than them seeing you do it. Yeah. There's just, no, there is nothing like, like they're, they're, because they were starting to come along when he was, when he was, you know, beating them down when they were doing the dog fight exercises and he just kept sending them back down to do the pushups. Cause every time they lost, they would have to get on the ground and do pushups. And which, you know, by the way, they came up that with them themselves. Yeah, he didn't do that. <laughs> that's they, right. They raised right. that's right. Y'all, that's right. you, why would y'all do that? Now that's right. they're top guns. Real, because they're, they're they're top guns. Guns. That's, that to be that's, to be at that level, you have to be so competitive. Gotta be. You got, and that's who you would want. That scene where they were <laughs> all watching when they were all watching Maverick do the test scene. I just felt like the actors did such a good job of drawing us in because it felt like they were watching it. But it also, when you hear all of them talk about Tom Cruise, they have such respect for him that I felt like that kind of bled out in that scene. It was just like, they're and you could just see them the light bulb going on, like, oh, we could do this. Yeah. Like, like, oh, we could do this. And they're, 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 they, because again, they have that competitive nature. If they have seen it done, then they not only want to do it, they want to do it better. That's right. That, right. That's the thing. And he knew that about them because they're right. kindred spirits. And um, the other thing that the movie did very well was we watched the relationship with Maverick build. You know, we've seen that where movies kind of force um, the people around the yeah. main character to start to love the main character. They just force it, you know. Um, but through the use of top-notch montage, the, both, <laughs> both of these movies use montage. But the, the second one, it really, to me, we got to see the relationships build. We got to see the respect build. They even laid enough foundation with that pilot, that pilot cohort that they could very easily have a, another, another Top Gun movie. You know, they set up enough little rivalries yes. and relationships yes. and they developed them somehow. All these relationships got developed clearly and well in two hours. Yeah. So I, it was just well written. And what and the actors, the actors were strong, very were strong. Because some of them, I have recognized some of them from other projects. And I was just like, oh my goodness, you're on a national movie. Like just as a pause, people who are actors and actresses. And just entertainment period. I know a lot of times we see a lot of like of the more microwave things that are happening because of social media, but there's there are a ton of people out here who are on their grind. I mean, acting in anything that they can to make sure that they are getting their movie credits or television, just their acting credits up, and to see them be on a screen alongside Tom Cruise in one of their first movies. I just, I was so proud of like Jay Ellis and just, uh, there was, um, I cannot think of his name, but he's on the movie Sisters. Like I just, I, on the show, excuse me, Sisters, like I'm so excited for them to see that those accomplishments for them. But one thing I really enjoyed about the movie were the callbacks. So like how beautiful callbacks. they, they callbacks. did, because they did so well, like just to name a couple, the volleyball scene that Aubrey hated, they did a better I don't scene. hate, I, I that hate, that hate, but job. just like, what's it's happening here? <laughs> they did it much better. But this yes. time they got back, it was a team building event. It was, they were playing football. They were having a good time. And it was also another way to piss off the, the lead person. And so that, or whatever, whoever, he, whatever his title is. So that was fun. The fact that Wait, they I have a, a I have a funny story about that that I read, okay. which is that they had filmed the beach scene and it was done. And leading up to the beach scene, all the actors have really gotten into the best shape possible. And then that scene, the filming for that scene was done. And then they needed to come back and shoot something again. And so the actors had let themselves go. And so, <laughs> <laughs> they and got so, back into that pandemic yeah, life. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but it was like, they did like this marathon. They weren't eating nothing. Everybody was exercising so that they could be in the best shape for this reshoot. <laughs> 
of that scene. I, I thought that, that was really funny. I love that. Um, because they're fully clothed I, in every other scene, you know. So yes. I can see how they were like, we got to bring it right now. Like, listen, <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna be naked in this. We're gonna rob right, on the beach. dress. That's we right. are robbing around right. Yeah. Um, I appreciated them having another bar in the movie and mm-hmm. them showing but this time kind of showing how the, again showing the rival oh they think they're the best they think they're the best i also appreciated how they had goose's son will rooster playing the piano and playing the exact same song well it was a little corny i still appreciated that part that's exactly how it felt <laughs> it was like a little corny but all right, i get it I like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah i i loved how they even just were able to have that dynamic between um, Hangman and and Go- and Rooster, just to show again some like main character rival, so they could have that picture at the end where they are shaking hands with the person that they're up against. One thing I did want to really point out was Val Kilmer and him being in the movie. Mm. Listen, because it had, I, I think it was either directly after the movie or I think while I was in the theater, I was like, wait, can he really not talk? And so do, I don't want to say it, what it is wrong. So sis, you'll have to look it up or I can look it up real quick, but he yeah, actually does have throat cancer. Yeah. And so he can't speak. And so it made me emotional just mm-hmm. knowing that it wasn't, like, oh, well, Val's sick. We're not going to have him in the movie. It was like, Let's put this in here. Let's Tom put Cruise this in. said like, Val Kilmer reached out and asked to be in Maverick. Man. And, and Val Kilmer, he didn't want to be in the original. And he reached out to be in this one. I think that that's I'm so just, dope. Th- th- it was just such a, it was such a powerful. So powerful. And that's and, and, how and, great and, of an and, actor and, Val Kilmer is. That's he right. didn't have to say anything. He mm. typed words, y'all. He typed them. I was like, when, your typing is so good. Like, I was just like, and it was, and, and, and they, and they did it. And the thing was, is they didn't do some type of weird CGI, you know, put his face on somebody. Like, they went, they, it made sense in the story, you know, yes. because, and it was just like, yeah, it was, was a, it was it was a logical trajectory. Yes. Like like they could have they could have shown us uh, Maverick thirty five years later, and somehow he had re- been reformed and was at the top of his game and was at the top of the food chain. But no, they they showed that Maverick over time would still be Maverick and would not rise to the top. But the Val and Kilmer still character, have on the same outfit, <laughs> the Val Kilmer character, Iceman, he <laughs> already always was technically excellent, but he was also about the discipline and the military military career Mm -hmm. and so it was it was it that character they just played out such a logical progression for him um for that backstory they just it was it was it was it was organic everything felt true yeah everything felt true even and even because if he wasn't sick i'm sure they would have found another he would have been more involved i'm sure Mm -hmm. in, in the movie but it's just to work that in the way they did so and then dope. when they had him, when he actually spoke, even though it wasn't him talking, it was his voice that they used to create that dialogue. Oh. His last, you know, they just took a whole bunch of different things. And I think it's um, something with his son or, or something. But, wow. but they did, that's actually, even though it's still in effect, it was his voice, you oh, know, that, that. That, they, that they used in that. And so just... There are things that make the movie doubly emotional. Mm -hmm. Like when you're in that scene with all the young actors watching Tom Cruise, who's the veteran, you feel it in two different ways. It's like you feel it in the movie way and you feel it in the real life. These people really have disrespect for, you know, Tom Cruise, just like these pilots have the same respect for Maverick. And then the Val Kilmer scene is like the most if that was strictly acting it would still be a great scene but when you throw on the top of there you know that he doesn't work anymore because he's actually sick in the way that they're showing on this movie it just gives a man I'm gonna tell you and that he was okay with them using that 
Mm-hmm. I think that that is also respect. something that mm-hmm. is because it's, that's like um, I think it's Sana Lathan. The scar that she has on her face is an actual scar, mm-hmm. right. and how she's used that in her her movies before. Right. Like you know, when actors and actresses are able to lean in into they actually are, it makes things even feel like you're now More watching realistic. a movie. Oh, like, that one can I just to see? You just gave me the perfect segue to a casting point I wanted to make, y'all, because the other. Thing thing is like um I thought they did so it has to be said that the diversity gender and race diversity in these movies mm-hmm. great movie one and movie two you know um movie two just did such an excellent job of having racial diversity and gender diversity in a way that is realistic based on today you know mm-hmm. they could have had eight women in there and that would have been beautiful and I would have loved it, but they had one. And that's probably in that pilot cohort. And that to me, it was, I, 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 it felt again, it was another point that felt truthful that there probably would be just in terms of numbers, the ratio would probably be 11 to one for a woman to, to be in that cohort. Um, but I did appreciate the racial diversity, but the, the, the point you were just talking about is about being the actors bringing their truth In the first movie, the love interest, Kelly McGillis, was uh, 5'10". And um, we know Tom Cruise is 5'7". And so she filmed the movie Barefoot um, and and in holes and in divots in the ground so that he could appear taller. And, and, you know, they're like always having her laying down and sitting because they were constantly trying to offset her height. Um, and so it's one of these things that where it's, <laughs> yo, that is too much, That's you know, and it's like, as, as a woman that is five ten, you know, and it's so funny because, um, I have a, a, a trauma story that I tell from my childhood of like, um, you know, auditioning to be in the whiz in a, in a, in a program and the, the, the adults, the director telling me that I was taller than all of the boys. And so I couldn't be, even though I was the best singer, she said, even though you're the best singer here, I can't cast you because you're taller than all of the boys. And I just thought, oh, so there's no scenario where Dorothy can be taller than the lion. And therefore I just cannot be in this. So I, I always hate when we play out this dynamic that man must be physically taller. Um, you know, it just, to me, it is just, it's, 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 it's not good. It's, it's, is because you could have a romantic relationship without that but it plays out in every single thing that the man in a play it ends up playing out even in our professional lives you know as a tall woman where it's like okay now this, I, this ugh, i'm accidentally taller than my supervisor now i got to deal with this the whole time we're working together um so i wanted to name that about the way kelly mcgillis was um the way they uh, showed her character in that first movie. But for the second movie, I thought they did a wonderful job. They cast a woman, Jennifer Connelly, who's actually, she's 5'7". They're the same height, you know? Mm -hmm. So cast a woman that's his height then, instead of casting a tall woman and putting her in a hole in the ground, you know? They cast a woman that is his height, but I also thought they did a great job of, um, you know, and that's again, if you're going to be caught up on height, high, you know, don't kai every tall woman to put her in the ground. Um, but um, I just thought Jennifer Connelly's character was age appropriate for Maverick. You know, it is such a common, common movie trope for the hero man to end up with, even if it's a genuine love story, it's like always like this m- much younger woman. And I just love that Jennifer Connelly, not only was she, um, age appropriate for Maverick's character. She had had her home, her, she had a, she was a well-rounded, fully developed character that had a whole backstory. Also, I love how these types of movies always bring in some sort of humor. And my favorite definitely, is- Definitely, <laughs> Anytime there is a upper level someone who is just angry all of the time played by Ever john gets- ham in this one was the he did a two, great job too the two of them the one that came to shut down the program oh and yeah the one that was at the up. school those two 
they're they're just angry like they're <laughs> mad they hate maverick and i'm like this type of person never gets old to me because there's always someone that's like so what you're saying is i can't do that and then they just go do it like i just or they've already done it um <laughs> It's just like with, uh, in the one scene where he was like, you need to put things in writing. And then like, after he gets chewed out, Tom Cruise is like, so I was wondering. And then he puts it down in writing <laughs> and it just made me laugh. Or like the part where Tom Cruise is at the house, um, him and the, yeah, that was the good pity, they, and they decide to have their sleepover. And um, the daughter's supposed to be at a, um, a sleepover herself, but she ends up coming home because she has to study. And so, <laughs> which was funny. And so to see um, him, she's like, listen, you can't, she cannot see you. So he's going out the movie, which to me <laughs> makes me laugh because I'm like, this is reminiscent out of the window. Age. All right. And this is a reminiscent of an 80s movie, him going out the window. But it's very modern as to kids are not dumb. She's standing at the window as his feet are coming down. <laughs> but she has a real moment with him, like, don't hurt her again. And so just that mm. intelligence from her to be able to say, listen, if you're going to be in, be in. But if you're going to be out, we need you to be out. Um, and something I wanted to point out was just how which I don't think we've gotten really to talk about a lot of is the actual action in the movie and the ride that it took you on so just to get to the part the climax of the movie where they're now they've done all the training they're like okay he's chosen the people they are about to go do this mission and they're on the mission just watching you feel like, even though you know this is not actually happening, you're like, this is happening. Everyone's going to die. Like, you're just like, what bad but, but thing? But the thing is, though, is it kind of is happening. It, it, it is. is. Because, mm-hmm. like, they are in airplanes. And I, I'm going to just tell you, that, that final scene, it was just, like, Tom Cruise, when it comes to this action stuff, He's just in a different class. Like, Such a different there was, class. There were, in one of the Mission Impossible movies, there's a motorcycle yeah, chase scene. And it is the best motorcycle chase scene in, in all of the movies. And the reason why is like, he's riding, number one. He's really riding. Like, they showed up behind the scenes where they're trying to get him to slow down. And he's like, like, y'all ride, y'all. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they filmed, they put cameras where you are when you're riding. You know what I'm saying? So like, if if you're a person who, who rides, that is the closest you ever feel watching a movie to how it actually is. And I'm just saying, I gotta imagine that's how it is for, for people who've known what it is to actually be in a jet, that they probably duplicated it as best as it could be yeah. for, you know. Yes. And it wasn't too much. That was the thing about this movie. Like they weren't, they weren't trying to beat you in the head with the message. They just had a great plot with great actors that just made sense, and they didn't overdo the action. They just did great action because you can easily see another movie who at the end they would have had all these. Uh, enemy planes come out of nowhere. Oh, and all the dudes would have, you know, everybody would have flew off the um aircraft carrier. It would have been like this huge explosion, C- you know, CGI battle that just lasted. You know, missiles doing stuff they couldn't even do. You know what I mean? It yeah. was like, this was just, it was so, like, the part where the, the, the one, the new plane did the maneuver, and they were like, what was that? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just so real. And even how they got to the point where, because the whole movie they're talking about, you know, it's the, it's the person in the cockpit. It's the pilot. It's the pilot. And they, unlike the stuff that Janai is talking about, and we'll point out in the first one where you got these plot points that don't go anywhere. Everything went somewhere. Absolutely. So when they were talking about um, that it's the pilot, it's the pilot they put a realistic situation where you now got a F-14 flying against a fifth generation plane. plane. And 
they had to use his, you know, his just skill to just. That's it. That's all they had. They didn't even have enough ammunition. That's all they had. And it was, like, and it was like, not only that, we take it away the landing gear. We take it away the, uh, uh, your weapons. We take it away all this stuff to the point where it's literally just the two pilots who were the protagonists just straight grit. And, and, it, and, it, it, and it was beautiful. such a, a realistic conclusion to that because they yes. ran out of ammunition. That's right. They were done. And they then done. someone else had to come and save them, you know, and wrap the whole thing up because another store, another um, takeaway from the movie it is about teamwork. You know, that's one of the things that um, and never leave been, your wingman. You never leave your wingman. It's teamwork. And that's what um, Maverick was trying to teach that young pilot cohort. And that is what um, that is what Maverick learned also when he was in Top Gun. They were teaching them to not be individuals out there and be tricksters, but to, right. to be a team. Mm -hmm. and so it was it they a teammate came circling back and the teammate that came circling back was the one that had been like the nemesis hangman. the hangman he had been the nemesis and the not team player he had been the nemesis though for rooster and so they have truly set up between those two between rooster and hangman they've set up the next top gun movie the movie creed to me at a very natural progression from the Rocky movies. And I, and I feel like the way they did Maverick, I feel like Tom Cruise could pretty much just be, he could be a cameo in the next one. Mm. But the way they set it up, they could go on a whole new There's so movie many line if they wanted. Mm -hmm. to, and, and, and just based on how well the writing was in, the, in that one, so. There's just one thing I don't want us to leave without which was my sentimental moment that made me go, oh, you guys, was Maverick had a family at the end of the movie. Um, it showed him back where he was, where it started off him being in a plane hangar, because I guess that's where he lives. Okay, right, 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 right. Yeah. And um, it showed Rooster there helping him fix his plane. Mm -hmm. And it shows Penny and her daughter riding up and Penny walking in, just looking around. And I was just like, this this is a built this is a a built family and it's and it's and it's just so good how they showed like you're saying Britt, the growth of it and without sacrificing the characters yep like growth doesn't mean like if, if you know me today i'm i'm different but i'm the same you know what i'm saying yeah. like 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 as i was 20 years ago and that it's like like you know when you watch this Star um, Star Wars and Luke is doing stuff Luke would never do. You know what I mean? Like, like just Luke would never be like this. You know, and it just makes you feel like they're just insulting the whole legacy. But it's like, this is just an example to your point, Britt, of because I believe I actually believe it would be hard to make a story where Maverick was out flying missions again. Like, but they brought it to a natural close. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like they showed him struggle with it. They showed it like just that thing of when 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 Ice told him it's time, you could just see it in his face, like, you know, and they didn't have to say, Oh, this is one last mission. It's just there. You know, you yeah. know, he, he's he's putting it all out on the line. And now to your point at the end. He's got his family. He's still flying. He's just in his, you know, his little restored jet. Right. You know what I mean? And he's just, you know, Stand up there. With... Yeah. You're right, Britt. That was just, that... it was a great Oh, game. and that part to um, Val Kilmer and Tom Cruise, the end of that scene where he like asked him, like, you know, are you now able to admit like who's the best flyer? He was like. Oh, he just oh. asked him. He asked him. Yeah. He was like, one more question. <laughs> Who's the better pilot? He was like, "Don't, don't ruin this moment. Like, it's don't a very nice moment. It was it's a very perfect. nice moment. It's a very that's, it's a that's exactly <laughs> how that's those two would do. Look, that's right. That's, that's what they would have done. Would have done. That's, what, that's they what they would have done. done. I love because that. Neither one of them admitted anything. Uh uh. Like, that's how it would have been <laughs> all the way up to the end. All the way up to the end. Let's just not to go there, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just thought that that was 
really yes, beautiful, beautiful, really sweet. And even how they showed sometimes movies don't need to have a funeral scene, but sometimes movies do. And yeah. I think sometimes people don't know what type of funerals um well uh what is it decorated is the word i'm looking for officers in the military what they have is so beautiful between the shooting of the guns yeah. and the the planes flying over yeah, and the yeah. folding of the flag like it's such a just an intricate um ceremony yeah. that they do to celebrate the life yeah. of the the person that has passed and so i was so happy that they incorporated that part yeah. i thought that that was beautiful i thought yeah, that was really and beautiful. that and that that was up when you in the tops at the top nominated the wings as a potential voting symbol yeah i, mean, I was that thinking was about that too because that, that that was a it was a was beautiful a tribute that um before the casket was lowered into the ground um, you know, Maverick takes his wings and he bangs it into the coffin for Iceman. And so, cause you know, it, it, it was just such a lovely tribute between their, for their I relationship. I wondered. Or messing up this expensive ass coffin. I'm I know. Playing. I'm like, you just bang yourself on. <laughs> you, but you don't even you know. put it in the inside. Look, I, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love it. It is going in the ground. But, but like, I, I love but I love that moment so much. I was about to Google, is that something that people do? But I just didn't even <laughs> want to know. Yeah. Because I just want to believe that this is what they do. Like that, yeah. that and was a moment. My thought was um, that wood can't even keep a, 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 a jacket pin out. <laughs> we in trouble. Oh, that, but, that, no, but, that, but that would make sense because it's a real short pin. And it it wouldn't have to penetrate far. Yeah. So I, you know, but you know what? Let's not ruin a beautiful moment. Just like Maverick said, <laughs> like Maverick Cowboy, it was lovely. That was hilarious. So, sis, I'm happy you made sure that we hit those couple of points before yes. we wrap. You know, but I think we're ready, y'all. And again, this is for both movies, folks. This is is the fr- the Top Gun franchise, a classic from the right perspective. What do you think, bro? Well, I gotta say that. As much as I love the original Top Gun, okay, I honestly, through our conversation, could see myself um, not, you know, calling it a classic. So it will, but what I'm saying is, is when you look at these two movies together, just to Britt's point in the beginning, it may be like the first one more the way it pulled. So for me, it is definitely as I don my aviators. It gets my aviators. Okay. Well, I got to say the second movie did not make the first movie better to me. I mm-hmm. will I will never forgive the first movie. You know, because there were just it was it's one of those things where it's just like I, there were some pieces that just, even if you were trying to be formulaic, you could have just cut some pieces out and just known that it would have flown that flow flowed better as a movie. So I can't, I'm not, I, I understand, I understand logically what you all are saying. Um, but, um, I, the, the second movie didn't redeem the first one for me, but I can together understand, um, what I, what I appreciate is Maverick the character and he is right now this franchise and so in that way I can tolerate having them combined for the sake of a vote and and that is why also for me it is because of this very well-developed Maverick character and the journey that we were able to see for him play out in the second movie and the very realistic and truthful world that they built around him that that this franchise will get my aviator glasses as well (laughs) i well i will tell you i really enjoyed the second movie um as i said earlier the second movie made me appreciate the first movie because it was just giving me nostalgia like okay you know just the connections of it i enjoyed the acting i enjoyed the just the 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 way the movie went in terms of just its its flow 
It wasn't slow at any point that made me annoyed. Um, it just, they did a really great job. And I appreciate, I feel like Tom Cruise has always had Top Gun in his mind. Like, if I could do it one more time, back. I am going to back. do these certain things. And so he got an opportunity to do that. And, and so that's, what, that's what he said. He said, I've, you know, he's wanted to do one, but he had to wait until the right story mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. and listen and he and it was the perfect timing yeah um so with that being said this movie does get my fifth generation aviator glasses <laughs> there you have it folks <laughs> the top gun franchise is a classic from the right perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, bro and sis. Thank you. Love you guys. Watching everybody. For watching everyone. Bye.